good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all very, very much for coming here today. My mother opened the curtains this morning and she said, Oh my, it's raining. I said, Mom, that's a really good thing. Somebody will get a place in the car park. <laughs> We're here today because, uh, as uh, many of you know, but some of you may not know, uh, my father donated his body to science. And therefore, there is, uh, there's going to be no form of funeral, at least not at present. And uh, they may hold his body from anywhere between uh, one to three years and then release it at that time. And as Uncle Junior said, he was an awkward bugger to the last. <laughs> My father, my father was born in 1928 in Hatton Road in Bells Hill and they moved to Newt Hill when they were three. Uh, his uh, mother and father, Norman and Mary Louisa, uh, they had two children, my father and an older sister, Ethel, uh, my dear aunt, uh, actually departed us only a couple of years ago herself. And, uh, and I miss her greatly. She was a wonderful lady. Uh, my father went to Newhall Primary School. And there, on the first day of Newhall Primary School, he met his long-term, lifelong friend, which would be uh, Mr. Bert Glenn. And uh, Bert would actually go on to marry my father's sister, become his brother-in-law, and uh, my dear uncle. Been friends a uh, uh, long, long time. Uncle Bert can tell you anything about my dad if you want to have a chat with him. By the way, to New York Primary School, and I actually went to New York Primary School also. And believe it or not, as strange as this may be, we actually had the same teacher. Thirty years later, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Robertson was the name of the lady, and she and she actually called me Sydney. <laughs> she did. She's always called me Sydney. I think she hung around for 30 years to get, get that man. The woman was horrible to me. I don't know what he did to that woman. But, well, actually, Jenny Robertson was a lovely lady and uh, she, she often talked about my dad and I guess she must have had that feeling of, of deja vu when she seen me because as uh, she probably, as you, as you all know, especially when I was younger, I looked very much like my father and that, that poor woman. She, she said in her report card we were Easily distracted, and I think she wrote the same thing 30 years later. Still, still easily distracted. After primary school, my uh, my father attended Bells Hill Academy, and it was at that time that he, he first started uh, his first love of his life, which was opera music, and uh, and right up until uh, until his passing away, my father was an avid collector of opera music and regarded by many people as one of the foremost experts in, uh, in Scotland. One of uh, my father's greatest achievements in that field was he actually made 28 90-minute tapes on the history of opera from the very start until modern day and actually took pieces from all his own collections and actually put them into those tapes. And that's uh, 42 hours worth of uh, my father dictating, adding clips from his record collection. So if, uh, if you're ever on a trip to the moon, and you've got nothing to do, <laughs> let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll get you a copy. I'm hoping to uh, have those transferred on to digital form, onto CDs and DVDs, and um, hopefully one day have those released so that people can get the knowledge and experience my father. It took him three years to do that task, and uh, incredible. Such was the will of the man himself to do that. My father, after his time at Bells Hill Academy, uh, did two years of national service. Uh, previous to that, at 16, he had left uh, to join uh, Lanarkshire Steelworks. Did his two years of uh, national service from 18 to 20. Returned back to the Lanarkshire where he would, he would work for 35 years. And, uh, very active in the Lanarkshire. He was a very active union leader and he would spend uh, a lot of his time, as my father always did, trying to help those in need and, and get a fair share for everybody. While he was there, he did many other things. Uh, 
He was one of the founder members of the Lanarkshire Bridge Club, and we have several members uh, here today. My father was a, a grand master bridge player, and uh, they held a moment silence for him at, at the Hamilton Bridge Club uh, earlier this week, which I thought was exceptionally honourable. During his time also in uh, working in Larkshire, he was an avid golfer. We have many of his golf golfing friends here today. And he actually taught me to play golf, my father. Um, and I took me out and went through the whole procedure of keep the head down and uh, all that. And actually, I turned out to be a relatively good golfer, and that was because of my father. And he was a great golfing man. He took me to many golfing uh, championships. In fact, I was at the 1971 British Open with my mother and my, and my father and uh, I was there when Doug Sanders missed that wee four foot part. I was actually about six or eight feet off the green when that happened and uh, for any of you who knew my father and his golf, he was a huge Jack Nicholas fan and Jack Nicholas has and always will be my uh, number one sporting hero. In fact, I had a wee tear myself when I played the last round in, in St Andrews this year. Moving along to the late 1950s, when my father met the love of his life, when he met Miss Rosina Margaret Perry, and there began, of course, a, a lifelong relationship. Soulmates had come together, and uh, of course, I need to tell you how wonderful a life that they've had together, and how much they meant to each other during the, their, what would be 46, 47, 48 years together. In October of 1961, I get the great pleasure of meeting them myself. <laughs> but I can actually tell you the time and the day, I'm going to write down to the exact minute. And it goes without saying, uh, you all know who my father was, and uh, I could, I could stand up here for the rest of the day telling you stories about the times that I had with my dad and what he meant to me. But uh, some of the things that he instilled on me, I think, were most important. He, uh, he gave me a, a wonderful insight into the world. And I think one of the many things that I got from my dad was a great sense of integrity. I always believed that that was one of his greatest strengths, my father's integrity. I've, I've, I've always tried to uphold that. He also gave me a wicked sense of humour, dashing good looks. <laughs> he taught me golf, he taught me to play chess. And one of the things that he used to enjoy most when he spent with his wee laddie out in the back garden he would uh, spend a lot of time teaching me about the stars. My father was a great astronomer, and uh, I learned all of my interest in astronomy from my dad. And he used to really pick the stars out and tell me I can still do that today. I could, I could hear him telling me what was what and what was where and when it was going to come up. I still look at those, those stars today. My father uh, was made redundant from the British Steel Corporation in, in 1980. And he then took up a, another great hobby of his, which was wine sales. He became a, a wine salesman for a fine wine company. And that was a, both a great hobby to my father and a great line of work. So we actually found him done something that he really, really enjoyed that was both obviously a, a working situation and you know, something that he, he, he loved. And if, if you've ever sat down with a bottle of wine with my dad, you know, he can tell you all about it. I, I haven't a clue, it's red or, or white, to be honest. That. For whatever reason, I never got the wine thing. So he never passed that along. But he always told me it was a good bottle. You know, so I, I, I think I got the basics. <laughs> then, unfortunately, uh, towards the end of the, the 1980s, my father started to become breathless. And he was diagnosed with a, a condition called pulmonary fibrosis, which is basically a disease that attacks the lungs and its ability to breathe. And through a, a, a long, hard, ardent fight, 
uh, there seemed to be no hope. It had been turned down by all the medical professions and they basically left them. And I came home at the uh, Christmas New Year 90, 1994 and spent three weeks uh, with my dad. And the poor we saw was, was an oxygen. And I remember when I left to go back to America after that visit, I, I really believed uh, that was the last time I was going to see my dad. And uh, that's a, that was hard. It was hard not to be able to help him. It was hard to see him, such a, a big, strong, strapping man, which is always my dad. My dad was like, you know, was like me, and you know, you can imagine. And it broke my heart. And there was nothing they could do. And then the first miracle happened. And it happened because of a pig. My father had seen a little piece in the newspaper that he had actually clipped out during his disease, during his illness, and he had kept it as his spare card, his joker card. And uh, they were doing medical experiments with pig's lungs. And he believed that if all else failed, it would be worth taking the chance to give them a shot of giving them one of these pig's lungs. And he found this little clipping in the deepest, darkest period of his, of his world. And he gave it to my Uncle John. And uh, my Uncle John, in his research, to try and find out about these pig's lungs, actually, through various telephone calls, ended up uh, speaking with a gentleman down at Patworth Hospital uh, in Cambridge. And they had turned my father down for a lung transplant at the hospital, which is for, for, for Scotland, which was Newcastle, and there was no hope there. This fella apparently <coughs> that it was possible. And about four or five months later, they had him down, they gave him a lung, and I remember getting a phone call and uh, I was on a plane the next day and arrived uh, at the hospital in Patworth. My father was sitting up in bed. Raise a buck. Joking and laughing and having a great time. And Mother Nature had intended taking them at that time. And that was over 10 years ago today. And uh, through the true miracle of science and the determination of my mother, his friends and you and the family. My father actually survived for 10 years longer than he was supposed to live for. And in those 10 years, my father had an had a absolutely wonderful life. He's, uh, he's had the opportunity uh, to come and see me on several occasions, been over three times to America and visited me there. He's taken cruises all over the world and him and my mother have had, had a great celebration of, uh, of our time and our lives together. And uh, 